we were somewhat surprised that um, even though the, the risk was relatively low, uh, an increase of 17% of uh, increased risk of 17% associated with a mild traumatic brain injury, um, it was significant. And, and then the, the relationship between the number of brain injuries and the risk of dementia was, was very clear. And um, we, were, we were a little surprised that the, the relationship, the association was, was such a, um, a drastic um, pattern. For example, one traumatic, brain in, one traumatic brain injury is associated with about a 22% increased risk of dementia, whereas two to three traumatic brain injuries is associated with about a 30% increase in dementia. Um, four traumatic brain injuries is associated with about a 60 percent increase in risk. And then if you have five or more brain injuries, uh, the risk is nearly three times the, the, the risk compared to somebody without a traumatic brain injury. It's important to recognize that most people, the vast majority of people who sustain a mild traumatic brain injury do not develop dementia. However, compared to somebody who does not have a history of mild traumatic brain injury or concussion, the risk is increased by 17 percent. It's important to, to really emphasize that um, a, a single, while a single traumatic brain injury has an increased risk of 17 percent, multiple traumatic brain injuries increases that risk significantly. So I think the message to many people is that um, if you've had a history of traumatic brain injury, it's important to do your best to prevent further traumatic brain injuries because the risk does increase uh, drastically as, as the number of injuries increase. Our data showed that even if you have a brain injury in your 20s, the risk of developing dementia in your 50s is increased by 60 percent. So even, even though it's nearly 30, you know, 30 years or more later, the risk remains higher. My recommendation is that uh, parents and kids who want to play a, a contact sport just need to be informed. You know, they need to be well informed that this may be a risk and that the and, and to emphasize the importance of number one prevention, preventing traumatic brain injuries as much as possible. And if, if somebody does have a traumatic brain injury or a concussion to very strictly follow the protocols to uh, leave the leave the game and get the proper assessment and treatment that's, that's necessary. And then if they have a history of, of concussion or traumatic brain injury, to do their best to prevent further, further uh, traumatic brain injuries. Because we know that some people who've had a brain injury develop dementia, and some people who had a brain injury don't develop a dementia. So, so we need to know more, and we need more research to to really get at you know, who uh, are at highest risk, what are the other factors that are contributing to that risk. I think it's important to get good assessment, good, good evaluation, and seek uh, treatment. For example, there are some cognitive rehabilitation strategies that may decrease the impact of, of the cognitive uh, deficits associated with a brain injury. Um, in terms of preventing dementia after a brain injury, again, we don't know exactly what are the key factors, but we do know that there are a number of other risk factors for dementia that people should also be aware of. For example, uh, excessive alcohol use, smoking, uh, obesity, um, diabetes, hypertension, depression.